feeling, and I think it'll be a big lift to the ball club knowing that that's what that's at the core of this whole thing. So, third row, a little to the right. Marv, how limited is Sal going to be? Well, we hope not at all. Um, he yesterday he I wouldn't say he looked a hundred percent, but he he was moving. I, I was shocked at how good he was moving. They feel like he'll be a step more today, and that's the only reason he's in there. If we see that he isn't, then we'll pull him out of there. One row in front, Adam. Murphy, is he in the lineup, or is he going to come off the bench? Uh, you've not seen the lineup yet? I've not seen the lineup. None of us have. Well, so he's in there. A lot of them have, haven't you guys? I mean, just kept it from Adam until later. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a ploy, you know. Yeah, yeah he's in the lineup. Yes, first row, all the way to the right. Murph, what about putting your bullpen together with the three lefties and, you know, Brian Hudson not being on there and how you want it to match up with the Mets? Yeah, you know, the Mets are um, a great offensive lineup, and um, but they don't they don't feature as many left-handed pockets for us. So we, we went with a different set of guys that are more right-handed favorable. Um but we still have our share of lefties for the certain moments, so that's what went into the thinking. If we were playing a different team, like the Diamondbacks, for instance, I'm confident that Milner and Hudson would have been on. Second row to the right. You had said, even from spring training, that y'all were going to be aggressive on the base paths, steal often. How much of that is your philosophy personally, and how much of that is just the talent y'all have on this roster and being yeah. strong that? I mean, I don't, I don't have any certain philosophy necessarily about it. I just think, I've said this a lot, like offensively, it's not just hitting. You know, you have to do a little bit of everything. You have to be able to beat teams in different ways if appropriate. But um, there's nothing more powerful than the home run. But if you don't have that, if you don't have that uh, set, of, set of ball players that do that often, then you've got to make other ways to win. So I think that's where it kind of grew from. One row behind, Tyler. Hey, Murph. Hi. Um, a lot of people be watching the Brewers who maybe haven't keyed in on them the whole year, um, but they know Yelich and they know Burns and some of the guys you've lost. What are the biggest reasons that you can make up for such big absences and still be here and really run away with the division the way you did? What were the reasons? Yeah. I mean, because it, it's, it's those... the dudes in the room, man. They, they, yeah. They're just a bunch of competitive guys that that uh, were not going to be de denied you know they just they wanted the opportunity to compete and you know you got guys like Adamas and and, and Contreras and and, and uh, Reese Hoskins and those guys and then some of the pitching staff that just Devin Williams and Peralta you got those guys they just they led the younger guys into just believing that you know we're going to play win tonight and we're going to we're going to live it so I think that's the reason we got through the regular season the way we did. Tim, we'll go to your new friend, Tim. Fourth row in the middle. <laughs> Having just played the Mets over the weekend, what impact does that have on the dynamic of this series? I think it brings it closer together. You know, like they know us, we know them. Um, what they did yesterday is significant. You know. Uh, they had to go there and win, fly all night, whatever, and go there, show up, and beat a really good pitcher, a really good team, and win. And they did it, game one. I think that injects a tremendous amount of confidence into a team that has been as good as anybody in the second half. And you know, I think it. Uh, like I said from the beginning, I, I wasn't going to worry about who we're going to play, but. I think the Mets are really, really good. The way they played Sunday in particular, getting on base, being aggressive with the steals, looked a little bit how you guys play. Did that strike you at all, that tone Sunday versus the previous two days? No, I, I think they, they knew what was at stake Sunday, and they knew that um, we were in a different situation on Sunday, and they knew they could take advantage. But they have that personnel. You know, when you got guys, Nemo and Taylor and Marte and Bader, um, 
those guys, Lindor, obviously. I mean, those those guys are really super talented. I mean, those are sought after. They have some position player. They have a position. They have a they have a team full of stars. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, um, they're so scary because they're they're a team full of great players. You know, you see Lindor's at bat in the ninth. That's indicative of. You know what's in what's in that dude. You know, he's special. Go fourth row, all the way to the right. Hey Mark, Mark, uh, what what do you think about facing off uh, with a team run by David Stearns? Um, jeez, what do I think about it? Well, I'm glad he's here. It's it's kind of fun. You can see some old friends. I don't look at it that way. You know what I mean? Like that's not. <laughs> You know, it's our our players on the field versus their players on the field. I don't I don't look at it deeper than that. I know David Stearns from being lucky enough to work with him for the last eight years, I guess, or parts of eight years. Um, he's a terrific man, and um, you know, he's a great decision maker, and and I have great respect for him. Same row to the left. We're kind of building off the previous question. Obviously, I think it was brought up to you yesterday the importance of these openers. Uh, what is your message to this team heading into this game one against, as you said, a very good Mets team? Yeah, I, th I think you know we've been playing playoff baseball every day, trying to survive every day, and we're still trying to survive. You know, like this is this is how we've we've done it. Nobody expected us to be here, but we kind of started to realize if we play this way, we're going to be okay. So I think we're in survival mode all the time, and it's kind of similar to playoff baseball. The third row in the middle. Murph, you've said don't compare this team to past teams, and all the guys that we've talked to all agree that there is a different vibe. Do you think that the guys in the room, a little bit of win tonight, a little bit of you, how do you think you've all come to this conclusion there is a different vibe about this team versus maybe even just last year? I think that... Dom, it's a good question. Um, I truly believe that every team is different. You know what I mean? Like 2025 has to be different, you know? Um, 2024 is its own entity. I believe traditions are for other people to talk about. The only tradition those guys in the room need to worry about is 2024. You know what I mean? That's it. If you played with a guy in 2023, that was part of that year. And we just take these individual years as they are and then let somebody else build the tradition. We're, we're part of that year, you know what I mean? And if we're part of more than one, then each one of them to me is an individual memory. So I don't say that to slight last year's team or the team the year before, just merely to say that this team is different. Go back to Adam, second row in the middle. <clears throat> Murph, on the roster again, you have a, a large number of pitchers who can give you multiple innings, mm -hmm. including like the four guys we would call starters. But do you have any of those guys that you're going to plan to use in relief situations and others that you want to hold for starting games? I mean, uh, another um – check out the moment type thing. We have guys prepared for different sessions, okay? So, God forbid a, a pitcher on either of our teams goes out in the first inning, has an injury. You gotta be prepared for that. Um, guy goes out and doesn't pitch well. You gotta be prepared for that right away. With a guy probably with some length, you know, or the ability to have some length. So, those things are baked in there and it's based on the scenario. Extra innings now. We don't have the ghost runner at second. Um, so you might have an 18 inning game. That's how that kind of worked out. Back on the left, fourth row. Murph, I know these are all tough decisions putting this roster together. Was there anyone that you left off that was just a, a really tough decision to make? Well, there's, there's more than one guy like that. When you think about the, the achievements of, of Hudson, what he did for our team this year, or the achievements of Milner, what he did for our team this year, um, uh, those were two tough ones. You know, 
Um, but they could be on next the next roster if we're lucky enough to move forward. Anything else for Murph? We'll go to the third row, All right? Murph, on that note, when you look at a guy like Hudson, I mean, you explained why the lefty matchups don't really work out for this series, um, and he could be on, on the next. As many, as many. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he could, you know, be in a future series as well. But just when you look at him and the numbers, like just the raw numbers that he had, was there a little bit of like a weird feeling oh. of like, oh. this guy's not on the roster? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, more than a weird feeling, you know, like that was like, wow, how that all transpired, the whole thing, it just, yeah, it's, but there's a lot behind it. There's a lot to it. Hard one. Colin Gray, too. I mean, let's be honest. Look what this guy has done. You know, he's part of the fabric here. You know, we haven't, like, designated him as one of the pillars, but he, if you ask the players in there, everybody believes in him, trusts in him, and follows his lead. You know, so um, that's a tough one. Okay, anything else? All right, thanks, Murph. Thank Appreciate you, guys. It. Good luck today. You've had a lot of different playoff teams uh, in, in your run here as Brewers owner. What distinguishes this one in your mind? Uh, well, a number of things come to mind. Uh, you know, starting with youthful energy and uh, – you know that spirit this this team has had more and we've had some really good teams but i don't know that we've had any team with this amount of energy and uh and this amount of players pitching in you know uh kind of there's an expression in i guess all sports especially baseball when it comes down to crunch time all hands on deck so we've had all hands on deck all year 17 starting pitchers 12 guys who had saves this year and uh well, Pat Murphy's focus on uh, win tonight uh, got us 93 wins and uh, home home field in the wild card round. Pretty pretty great. We'll go to the top row toward the left. Uh, Doug Russell with uh, 973 the game in Milwaukee. Oh, and I don't think the mic's on that well. That's how we let you know that we don't really want to hear from you. <laughs> try, let's, let's try flipping the switch on that. The ratings say the same. <laughs> I think we're good. Doug Russell from 97 3 the game in Milwaukee. Uh, I've asked you this a couple of times now that the season is over. I don't know if you have a chance, or the regular season is over, I should say, to look back on the last 12 months and difficult decisions made at the end of last year. Um, the trade of Corbin, the managerial change. Do you feel a sense of vindication, satisfaction? What, what, when you look at the 2024 season, the last 12 months, looking at the playoffs, how do you kind of process all of that? You know, our team had a number of, uh, an organization number of challenges this year. Change uh, is something that's present in all sports. Uh, you know, maybe it was our turn to have a lot of changes thrown at us at once. And opportunities. Right. So, um, you know, it was a real challenge to decide whether or not to trade Corbin Burns, but the opportunity to get, you know, Joey Ortiz and D.L. Hall, you know, it's the other side of that. Uh, we had a, a number of other opportunities this offseason we didn't take. We had opportunities to trade Willie Adamas. We uh, fortunately did not, you know, go forward on that. Uh, all, all of our better players were asked for, uh, several of whom are in the lineup today. And, uh, and so I think, you know, we, as an organization surmounted those. And then this is more in reflection than at, at the moment, but we really thought about uh, people and, you know, importantly, our entire uh, coaching staff, even though uh, Craig was the winningest manager in our history and obviously, you know, extremely talented, uh, we decided to go with our people and trust our people. And, and I'm very gratified by that because Pat, and the whole coaching staff. There's a whole coaching staff behind him that has been here and uh, they've been here for a long time and, and I'm very proud of the job they did. Second row to the right. You mentioned Willie Adamas. Obviously, he's certainly raised his stock with the way he's played this year. Just what has he meant to this organization from the last few years and what's your confidence level about 
him being here beyond this year? So he's, uh, from the day he got here, he brought, uh, I talked about energy, he brought an infectious energy uh, and, you know, teammate first and, and leading by example. And he wanted to play 162 games this year. It got to the point when we clinched that he really needed a day off probably for a month. Uh, so he took one day off. That, that sends a great example to all these young players. And uh, in, in particular, you know, bringing Jackson Churio to the major leagues at a, a very early age. I think some of Jackson's success, obviously it starts with, with who he is and and he's, his performance, but having Willie, and, and by the way, Freddie Prolt and William Contreras as role models definitely helped him. So it, it starts with that. You know, he's one of the greatest shortstops, you know, he and Robin Yount in our history, and uh, he'll always be part of us. Uh, the challenge, the, the great news for Willie and his family is, you know, the, the, I think the free agent contract's going to be, you know, very valuable for him, him and, and quite high. And we'll do what we can do to stretch, but others have bigger pocketbooks and uh, we'll see what happens. Same row toward the middle, Adam. Mark, um, after seeing Sal Freel go down the other day, what do you think about him being on the roster and in the lineup tonight? Well, I just heard uh, walking in that, that Murph said that uh, he was in the lineup. And, and, and look, Sal, I saw Sal two days ago when he could was sort of not walking great, saying, I'm going to do it. And that's, you know, the same guy. I was in Yankee Stadium last year. He and Joey Weimer, and you know this, Adam, collided. Joey Weimer's like 6'4", 220, full speed. They collide. One guy's 6'4", one guy's 5'8", or 5'9". They crash into the Yankee Stadium scoreboard. They they knock it out. And who comes up with the ball? Sal Freelich. Joey Weimer has like a bloody mouth. That That's Sal Freelich. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not surprised he's playing today. Go third row toward the middle. Mark, I want to go, wanna go back to, to leadership. You have some experience and expertise as a leader of people. What is it that Matt Arnold and Pat Murphy have shown you in the way they lead their groups this year, especially in the changeover from a year ago? And so starting with, with Matt, you know, Matt has been, uh, you know, the glue in our uh, baseball ops group. And, and he has steadfastly uh, advanced the careers of, of many, many people in his group. And uh, I think, therefore, with him, it starts with the fact that he, his team knows he's looking out for them. And I'd say the same thing with Murph. You know, I had an opportunity to uh, see how Pat handled being the number two bench coach here uh, for nine years. And with Murph, it's always been about about people. And that's been the case for both. What you know, what we learned about, and not not every number two can be a number one. And we we learned that uh, that Murph is is a true number one. Third row toward the right. Um, Mark, obviously you guys are going up against the Mets, and David Stern is someone that you helped bring into a you know really high role um, in this game. Just curious as to what, where your relationship is at with him now. Have you guys talked leading into this series at all? So I guess now, uh, you know, me old school talk, talk means, you know, talking, talk for this generation is texting. So we, we texted. Uh, I congratulated him after the game last night, after they clinched, and uh, he wrote back when they were on their way here. We haven't, you know, he was met with a lot of our folks on, on Friday and get here on Saturday, so we mostly texted. And he's had, uh, I know from seeing how hard Matt's been working these few days, it, it's an enormous job to just think which, who's going to go on, as you know, who's going to go on your roster, and depending on who the matchup is. So he's been pretty busy, but I'm, I'm sure I'll see him at some point during the series here. Fourth I'm row. very happy for the success he's had. He was uh, very happy. Fourth row toward the left. Mark, getting back to Willie, uh, as a competitor, which I don't think people realize how fiery you are when it comes to this stuff, <laughs> is it frustrating that there are teams out there, the way the, the, the pay structure works in baseball, that you can't sometimes compete because you have the fans in town not understanding that, yet you want to be able to pay these money and retain these players? Well, we have fan. You know, we have an extremely informed fan group, so I think they recognize uh, there's some limitations on how we can put a roster together. Uh, but of course, when there's a player that you love, um, 
that can have some frustration that goes with it. The, the way we try to to manage it is is uh, you know there's a sort of a traditional small market analytics model where after three years you start to look to trade players. We do the opposite. We try to figure out how many players we can keep here for their their full time, starting back with Prince Fielder. And you can't, unfortunately, we, we haven't been able to keep everybody, but a lot of them. And uh, felt really good to give Willie that standing ovation the other day when he, he walked off the field, knowing it it could be his last regular season game with, with the team. And by the way, I made sure I was in my seats down next to the dugout so I could stand and cheer for him as well. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, we all know what we deal with. And I, I think if you give in to, uh, we're too small. We can't compete. We don't have the money. You, you've you've lost it. I, what I do like, you know, there's been questions about the fact that our, our fans now expect more than just making the playoffs. You know, I love that because when I was first sitting in this seat in uh, 2004, it was all about, you know, we had lost for you know 11 seasons at that point. We hadn't been in the playoffs at that point for over 20 seasons and. You know, we had no expectancy. Now we have a high expectation, and I prefer that. Go fourth row toward the right. Mark, having worked with David Stearns and having him been here for as long as he was, you probably had a suspicion that you would be facing again with your team at some point. Does it surprise that it happened so soon in his first job after this, coming back to and you guys in the first round? Yeah, it's, it's a little... Um, Look, we know how formidable and how smart he is, so <laughs> uh, probably would have not preferred to face him. But uh, we also know how formidable Francisco Lindor is, you know, at the top of the lineup and and uh, probably going to be, you know, close to the MVP voting this year. So, uh, you know, that said, I, I, I'm really proud that David was able to, you know, turn the Mets around in, in one season. And if you look at how he did it, he sort of did it the same way he did things here. With a lot of small moves that, you know, any particular move didn't really, you didn't, didn't even notice, but then in the aggregate made a, a real difference. It probably had more to do with the, uh, who's the mascot, the uh, McDonald's? Uh, uh, Grimace. Grimace. <laughs> the Grimace. <right. laughs> probably should have, uh, if we have a purple seat for, for the Grimic, Grimace, Grimace, <laughs> probably have some sort of seat for Stearns. I think somebody had to explain to David who Grimace was. <laughs> well, obviously me too. <laughs> All right, we have time for maybe one or two more. We'll go to the last row on the left. Kind of along the same lines, we can draw a line to the players that David Stearns acquired for the Brewers, but are there tendrils of, of David Stearns still in this organization, things he maybe put in motion that you're kind of seeing come to roost here over the last couple of years? Well, sure. But again, the organization, he just starting with he hired Matt Arnold, right? So uh, it starts with that. And, you know, David, uh, what, what you do uh, as a best practice in all business when someone's departing, you have a, it's called an exit interview. So an exit interview with David on, on the whole group and in particular on Matt. And he was very positive on Matt. And you can see it, we haven't missed a step. Uh, and so, sure, his, his fingerprints are... You know, throughout Matt's group, but you know, Matt has certainly made it his group over the last couple of years. Final question from Adam, second row. Mark, we know you have a long history of loving the Yankees. Yeah, I've never asked you how do you feel about the Mets. <laughs> well, you know, uh, growing up as a sports fan in in New York and as a Yankee fan, it, as it turned out, I, I really started to love the Yankees in the '64 series, and was sure they'd be back. Now, as you know seven years old or something. And that was the start of the big decline. At, at the very same time, the amazing Mets, you know, with Seaver and Kuzman and Tommy Agee and all those players. So uh, I grew up as a New York sports fan. So it's, uh, you know, and, and, and by the way, part of me, part of me is very nervous about this, obviously, how good the Mets are. But, uh, you know, it's great to actually have the, the attention we have in this series because the Mets are playing. and. I embrace that. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thanks Absolutely. for moderating.